I get to work on all electric powertrains on vehicles from garbage trucks to school buses. Sure. Oh, it's back on. Sweet. Okay. Um, and if you want to hear more about Motive's really cool technology or the thriving maggot population that currently lives on the refuse truck, <laughs> I would be happy to talk to you about that afterwards. Uh, I don't see many women in my line of work, and that was actually quite a shock to me. So imagine a world where it is normal to see women in STEM and where young girls are inspired to pursue their love of math and science. Throw in a few extra rainbows and you have precisely the world in which I grew up. When I entered the workplace, I was faced with few women in STEM for the very first time. So once I realized that the environment that guided me towards engineering was manufactured, it became clear that we must work hard to um, encourage more women and other underrepresented minorities to go into STEM. With greater diversity, we can have more accepting and comfortable work environments and even design better products. Companies that box themselves, companies end up boxing themselves in when they don't have diverse teams. I'm going to describe to you how thoroughly brainwashed I was into believing that female engineers were common and the insights that I had once I entered my first job and realized that we were still very far behind. The recipe to incentivize girls to go into STEM is support at home, after school programs, relatable peers, and role models. I was lucky to have all of these in my life, but sometimes it takes just one to make a difference in a girl's experience. So first, I'm lucky to have parents at home who support and love me very much. My mom is a career-oriented, independent woman who has traveled the world by herself and was never afraid to get her hands dirty. I grew up knowing that women could take care of themselves and knew that I could take on any tasks that I put my mind to. Both my parents recognized that math was really useful, and even though that wasn't their strong point, it, they wanted to give me every possible chance to explore it through games that they would make up or books that they would read to me. I very clearly remember my dad telling me at age 10 that if I liked math so much, I should become an engineer. So this photo is of me with my grandfather in 1996. My grandfather was an electrical engineer who always encouraged me to keep up with the latest technology. Even now, he emails me about twice a week on topics such as the latest in self-driving cars to solar-powered airplanes. Having a supportive environment at home really allowed me to imagine myself as an engineer from an early age. After school programs were also very influential in my decision to go into engineering. Because I was already broadcasting that I wanted to be an engineer, by the time I got to middle school, my Girl Scout troop leader suggested that I join an engineering summer camp. The camp was led by a vibrant woman named Jill, who would go take us on field trips, give us mini lessons, and then guide us through the process of designing and prototyping our own invention. Our lessons that summer were way more challenging than anything I ever encountered in school, and the work in that camp solidified in my mind that I wanted to become an engineer. So, this is a newspaper article published about the camp in the Oregonian. I was so thrilled to be featured in that photo that I failed to realize that being called out like this meant the tides had not changed yet. This was an unusual opportunity that I was lucky to find. Jill was the only woman in her engineering class in college and she felt that engineering was unnaturally void of women. So she decided to dedicate part of her free time into keeping young women like myself interested in engineering. As the article states, studies show that girls are most likely to turn away from math and science in middle school. So little did I realize, but my demographic was being specifically targeted to counteract the statistics. I got quoted in the Oregonian article, I didn't know much about electricity, said Kim Kilday, a Gresham student who attends Franciscan Montessori School. It all makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, I still had a lot to learn. Um, but I do remember the uh, specific activity that um, I was talking about there. We were uh, tasked building a LCD display circuit that would switch between an L and a 7. And it was quite a reach activity for us at the time but I do remember the moment where it all clicked into place and I was able to complete the lab and help some of my new friends through it too. <coughs> Having relatable peers is also hugely important when it comes to keeping girls interested in STEM. When it came time to pick a high school, I chose St. Mary's Academy, an all-girls school. 
They had a fantastic academic reputation and were known for having a tight-knit and loving group of women. I became really close friends with some of my classmates from math class. In my sophomore year, two of them co-founded a new science Olympiad team, one state, and then got to compete at the national tournament in Wichita. They strongly encouraged me to join the team, so I quit volleyball my junior year and became a member of Psy Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> the events ranged from written exams to building and competing with mechanical and electrical devices. My favorite event was Circuit Lab, and I think that I was inclined to take on that subject because of what I had learned at the Girl Scout camp in middle school. So this photo is of the Science Olympiad team my junior year. That's me, and then three of my best friends, Amy, Michelle, and Marian. <laughs> After winning first place in Oregon, our team was invited to the national competition, which was actually held at George Washington University. And that was where my grandfather got his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, so he was really excited. And being surrounded by hundreds of high school students all excited about math and science was really, really inspiring. Looking back, I can see that the opportunities that I got in middle and high school were a chain of events, each building on the other, which were able to lead me to a great college and then my dream job. I was fortunate to attend Harvey Mudd College. <laughs> in, uh, all the circuit experience that I had had actually gave me a leg up in my first electrical engineering class, and I even got to be a tutor for that professor as an upperclassman. Harvey Mudd is one of the few entirely STEM schools that has had a lot of excess enrolling women. Actually, the class below me was 51% female, which was kind of a breakthrough. So that's just quite a different experience for my Girl Scout camp leader, Jill. Another way to interest girls in engineering is to show them relatable role models. Mud prolonged my delusion that the engineering field had many women, <laughs> <laughs> because they also did a great job bringing in female professors to teach in the engineering department. More than half of the engineering courses I took there were either taught or co-taught by women, so I had a ton of fantastic role models. So that says the shock of the real world, if you can't see my pale slides. Um, when I graduated, I felt like I was part of a huge wave of women flooding the workforce. And I got the first hints of being wrong as I started to apply for jobs. When I first went to interview for my current job at Motive, I was a little daunted to find that they had no women on their engineering team. Despite starting out as the only woman engineer, I felt very welcomed and included. They treated me exactly like everyone else, even when it came to heavy lifting or changing rental car tires. <laughs> um, so we finally got a second woman on the engineering team, a mechanical engineer named Megan. And when she first started as an intern in 2014, I was surprised at how different it felt having her sit in on the engineering meetings. I had been dealing with an unknown source of stress and didn't even recognize it until it had been lifted. And this made me realize that it really was a problem to see f so few women in engineering. Even at a company that was so supportive, it didn't feel right when I was the only woman there. Initially, I felt like if I messed up, maybe that would reflect poorly on women in general, and then the company wouldn't want to hire more women. Um, it's really a relief now to see that that was not the case. <laughs> so I grew up in an alternate universe and thought that all women had the chance to go into engineering if they wanted to. Reflecting on my own experience, I see now how important it was for me and my friends to have such fantastic programs and mentors. And I was really excited to find out that my friend Michelle, who was one of the co-founders of the Science Olympiad team, was part of a calendar called See It, Be It. In the calendar, they created profiles of cool young women in STEM careers to help show girls more relatable, real-life role models. So in order to keep the steady stream of women trickling up into the workforce, we need to continue these programs, which show girls how fun and rewarding engineering can be so that the wonderful bubble where I grew up can become a reality for everyone. So, thank you.